One, I think it was cool that you said that you were cool with us just saying, hey, instead of going to dinner, let's go do something cool. Yeah. Go do some rock crawling in. We didn't have the time to be able to take you on one of our uh, really long trails. This is one of our oh, really wow. short ones. Just have a couple obstacles. Yep. That was that was good. That was awesome. So, I'd like to have been able to do a full night of it, but oh well, we still have to get up in the morning. It's awesome mm -hmm. if it's like on a set Friday night, but Thursday night doesn't work out so awesome. Right. Uh, people got to go to school. But um, so what we always like to get into is Okay, so you're in the mortgage industry. Right now, your your role is? Role is executive regional manager. Condensed down to? Condensed down to dick puncher. Corporate dick punch. <laughs> Corporate dick uh, puncher. So ultimately, that's what I use, use him for, because I'm like, yes. okay, I need this fit. I saw, C I CDP, saw it on CDP. the title. <laughs> yeah, CDP. So, so, yeah. so we do these bio sheets, like, so we can get to know the guests a little bit before they come, and I was like, I'm gonna like this guy. His name's Joel, and he's a corporate dick puncher. <laughs> yes. I'm like, this is gonna be good. Yep. Yep. Aaron, well, Aaron has needed uh, some some of that to, to help him you know, get to where he needs to be. Well, there's it's so. interesting how folks in the past have not. They just they, they seem to placate. You say this needs to happen, and they're like, oh yeah, we'll take care of. It. Then they just know you're gonna keep grinding on it until it just gets figured out, and you, or you're just gonna give up the the, the cause. Now I handed it to Joel. And he just started tearing into it. And at first, I wasn't sure. I'm like, I'm gonna be dealing with another regional. Like, I, yep. I, I'm, I just, to be frank, I didn't want another damn regional. Uh -uh. And then uh, you came in. I'm it. like, well, I'll give the guy a shot. And then you showed up with a gun. I'm like, okay, so I'm liking this guy. <laughs> <laughs> you bring a 338 to my office. I can handle that. So yep. it started yep. to evolve from there. And then you start lining out the issues. And he's just knocking them down and knocking them down and knocking them down. And when those barriers are coming down. Then you start seeing our ability to like, whoa, whoa, all these big barriers that we were we were pushing against gets knocked down, so we can continue to keep keep advancing and advancing, and our business just keeps growing significantly. I don't know if you've seen where we're at now, yeah. but damn. Yeah. Well, when when you give people a chance, when you say, why were these roadblocks set up? Why did they do that? For some people, they, it makes sense to them to put up roadblocks, but to me, I don't like roadblocks. I I, I will fight all day you give me a roadblock and tell me i can't do something i want to find out how i can do something so why do you think that is so um why do you think people for, are gonna, in business want to put up roadblocks it's it's because they're afraid of i mean th there's core guidelines there's core rules that you have to abide by mm -hmm. whether it's government putting it on whether it's the own company putting their own guidelines in but the problem is people are afraid of if we remove that then these people are going to take advantage so and corporate America, in my opinion, puts those roadblocks up to say, you know what? We're afraid of giving you the freedom to make your own choices, to hire your own people, mm -hmm. to do it the way you want to do it. And when people, they're afraid that somebody's going to take their job, that somebody's going to succeed by you giving them freedom to do that. Now they're going to mm -hmm. succeed at it, and now you don't mean anything. So especially, at least to me, in the mortgage world is, if they succeed at doing that, that means that regional manager don't, no longer exists. If mm -hmm. I don't show value to anybody, then what's the point of even having it? Just like you said, you, when you came over, it didn't, you didn't need me. You needed somebody to get rid of the roadblocks. Yeah. It didn't necessarily have to be me, but at the same time, previous management, they weren't willing to take those roadblocks down because they were afraid if, you, if they took them down, you're going to take their job from them. Oh, yeah. They, 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 don't, they don't mean anything at that point. You don't need to. So, well, what I've always seen, what I've told previous regional managers, not just in this company, but in other companies, it's like if you've got guys like racehorses that can run a race and outrun damn near every horse out there, why are you sitting in mm -hmm. the stands throwing rocks at them and giving them the heaviest jockey in the, in the group? Yeah. Why don't you give them a really light jockey and get your ass out there and rake the track? Yeah. And let them run. Right. Just let them run. Keep raking the track. Keep it clean. Keep the rocks out of it, and see what they can do. And nobody would ever listen. And right. you're the only one that's ever listened. Well, I had um, 
this was, I don't know, four or five years ago. The phone was ringing in the office. I mean, there was about 30 of us in the office. My receptionist, once it gets to five rings, it starts ringing to everybody's desk. So I pick up the phone, it's ringing. I pick up the phone, I say, hello, Security National, how can I help you? It was Steve Johnson, the president. And he says, what are you doing answering the phone? And I said, it was ringing. <laughs> and he said, don't you have people that you pay to do that? And I said, yeah, don't you pay me to do that? So to me, I'm not, you know, and I think that's where managers, they, they feel the power mm -hmm. and they see the power that they have and they feel like they have to hold on to that power. To me, I'm just another problem solver. I mean, when, when I got introduced yesterday to a, to a girl in Svetlana's branch mm -hmm. and she had no idea who I was. And Dylan's introduced me to her. This is Joel. She doesn't know who I am. And she said, well, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm a processor. I, you know, I'm a glorified processor. You, you need something? Let me know. She's like, well, can you help me figure out this income on this loan? Yeah, I can. I'm not, there is no job in my region that is below me. I will do anything. Now, again, I'm not going to do it for you every day. I'll help you and I'll teach you how to do it, but I'm not going to do it for you. But any email, any phone call, somebody emails me, I will reply to their email. I don't, I don't care if you're the receptionist. I don't care if you're a top producing loan officer. I'm going to treat you with the same respect as anybody else. And to me, that's, that's just what I go off of. Well, that's, it makes you unique. That's, that's part what, of being that's a what, Joel. Yes. I mean, yes. frankly, just, right. they're just it's, good people. They're just good people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was that? What was the question? That, that's how come I got those tax, tax answers so early from you in the last couple of days, right? Well, hey, sometimes. Uh, things going on. Hey, did you get them answered? I was flying my plane. <laughs> Some, it's hard to reply when you're flying. I will yes. say that. I, I got to get a Bluetooth headset of the plane. Just kidding, FAA. <laughs> oh, you can't have that? No. I mean, you don't want any distractions oh. while you're, oh. you know, flying. Back to Joel. Yes. Back to change. So I think, I, well, the question, I don't remember what the question is, but, well, how did you even get going in this to begin with? In the mortgage world? Yeah. Um, I, my friend called me and said, hey, uh, do you want a job? You know, I was looking for a job. He called me and said, hey, you want to come over? Um, we'll pay you minimum wage. At the time, i just gotten divorced and at 21, which is kind of weird, but divorced at 21. I had nothing going on. And I said, yeah, sure, I'll come and work. I don't got a job. And I went over and started Mortgage World. And the guy handed me a, the guy that I, you know, is, is one of the people that, um, for my, because of my success, he's one of the ones that started it. But he handed me a phone book and he said, start calling. And I said, what do you, what do you mean start calling? <laughs> he said, well, this is your job. You're gonna call people in the phone book. And I said, well, what do you want me to say? And he handed, he pulled out of his back pocket a script and he unfolded it. It was like 20 people had already used it, you know, for the last year. It was all falling apart. He's all, say this. And I said, okay, well, who do you want me to call? And he said, well, I don't care. Start with the H's. That's what your last name starts with, right? Start with the H's. I don't care. So I did that for two months. Wow. I called phone number after phone number. And did I was- Did you make it out of I the was, H's? I made it to the J's. <laughs> to the J's. Yes. Okay. I made Success. it to the J's. Yes. It's a small town. But yeah, right. <laughs> but back then, you know, I mean, it was a phone book. This For thing. those kids wow. out there, they used to <laughs> make a book called a phone book. Yeah. yeah. Put all the phone numbers in there for all the people in your town. Any, so, anybody who, who got a phone got published in the phone book yeah. with their phone number, unless you requested to be unlisted. Unless you yeah. paid the fee. Right. You paid the right. Fee. So that, that's how I start. That's how I got started. And Ever since then, it's been one thing after another that I wanted to do. I wanted to learn something new. Mm -hmm. So I forced myself to learn, do something else, do something else. I can't fund a loan, don't ask me to fund a loan because I don't know how to do that. That's the one thing I don't know how to do. Yeah, but I kept- I haven't done that one myself yeah, either. But I kept I kept going and saying, you know what? I want to learn how to process. I want to learn how to be a top producing loan officer. I want to learn how, how do I do each of these? Um, so that's- So you've been a producer? Uh-huh. Okay. Yep. yep. So I'm curious, like why switch from being a producer to higher level management, like more of the executive team. Where's where's the drive there for you and how'd that, how'd that transition look? Well, it happened because it, again, I wanted to learn stuff. Mm -hmm. So I went from producing, well, you know, calling in the phone book to being a producer. Then from there, I wanted to learn how to process because okay. I felt like 
okay, you you can't do this. You're not helping me get my loans done. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to learn how to process. So then I learned how to process, then I learned how to underwrite. Because then when I was a processor, I was still doing loans, but I was processing my own loans. And the underwriter kept asking me for stuff. And I kept going, well, that's not the guideline. Why are you asking me for this? So then I learned how to be how to do underwriting. Went from underwriting and I said, well, you know, you people managing us underwriters, you're telling us to do this stuff. That's not the guy. To me, that's not how it should be. So then underwriting manager, and then from there, you know, uh, went to management um, as everybody. Mm -hmm. And I'm a processes guy too. So refine the processes, make it easier for people to get their loans done, sure. ask questions, and and then just slowly I just, now I'm executive management, mm -hmm. but I still have all of my fingers, every one of them, in everything. I know how, you know, when they say, okay, well, closing and funding, this is it. Okay, then we're gonna change this. We're gonna change it to be more efficient, whether it's processing or underwriting, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, when we have problems with underwriting, okay, I'm the one that gets to make that decision to say, hey, this is how we're gonna do it. Again, it goes back to, we still have to have the core guidelines. Right. We still have to meet those guidelines, but how we get there, so a lot of management wants to tell you this is the way you have to do it. To me, that's it doesn't have to be that way. If there's ten different ways for me to get from A to B, right? It doesn't have to be and one way. And oftentimes, it's the people that are doing the work that come up with the best innovations. Right. If yes. you just ask the right questions, so and, if you don't, and then be a chief hurdle remover, right? And right. Get out of the way. Yes. Well, most of the time, so, we're talking about executive or management in the in our in that industry. They keep regurgitating the same crap all the time and yes. never change the systems. Right. They continue to just follow the same pattern. So it doesn't take much in our industry to stand out. Right. Just tweak a little bit and yes. now all of a sudden you're this anomaly and everybody just needs to quit following the same pattern some fool put right. together decades ago that doesn't work yeah. anymore. Well, in our industry too, youth is not coming into our industry. Mm -hmm. when, when I started, they handed me the book. I mean, there was a whole program. I mean, yeah, hand me the phone book. But they had a whole booklet too that I had to go through over a year. Okay, this month you do this, and this month you do this. And you have to do assignments, kind of like, uh, you know, a junior mentor program, kind of, kind of what you were talking about. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have that in the mortgage world today. I mean, there's some companies that do it, but the majority of the volume coming out of our region, coming out of our company, are seasoned LOs. Mm -hmm. You know, 30, 40 plus years old. We don't have 19, 20, 21 year old kids coming in out of, you know, marketing at, you know, ASU. They don't come out of marketing and go, I want to be a mortgage loan officer. Yeah. We, as an industry, at least for our company, and I think as, a, as an industry in whole, it it's just doesn't, on the real estate just side, is yeah. not bringing in the youth of it. And so when you have people stuck in their jobs and have been doing it for 30, 40 years, they don't. Nobody's questioning them. Mm -hmm. Nobody's saying, why don't we do this better? And that's just, I question it all. Mm -hmm. If I can make it better and more efficient for anybody, for Aaron, for anybody in our region, that's what I'm going to do. Awesome. Um, I question it all. I question it all and no matter what it is. It doesn't have to be work. Right. It can be It can be your family life. It can yes. be your faith. It can anything. be your friendships. It can be anything. Question I, it. How find, do, out, right. find out how deep does it go. And how do I get better? Mm -hmm. how, do, how, do, how do I become more efficient at it? What do I have to tweak in my life to make it better? Um, and if you're not doing that, I, the president of our, uh, the CEO of our company, his dad said, if you're not growing, you're dying. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's not just business, that's life. Right. That's everything, relationships. Um, if you're not growing, it's dying. Your relationship, if it's not growing, it's dying, period. Well, what I'm, I'm finding, I, I'm not pushing for growth for the future, I'm pushing for improvement in the process and the communication. You know, so it's all I'm doing right now is bitching about communication. I, oh, long and loud, I want the communication corrected, I want it improved, I want people to use their phone, not their email, if you're using it oh, message. Hallelujah, brother. Yeah, so the thing is, like, oh. it, you've got, we've got three tools here, we got, that people use, instant message, phone, and email. They tend to lean on the other two and they go to the phone last. Like, instant message is to see if they're available for a call. Mm -hmm. Phone is to have the discussion about what's going on and go into the depth of whatever, and the email is to do the follow-up bullet follow points up. of what you just talked right. about. Right. Right. Track that's what press. you do. Put it all in writing. And that's to me that is. I've been asked, you know, okay, what what do you what do we need to improve as a company? What what's the number one thing that businesses don't understand, or what what do people not? Um, what do they not master well as a company? And I say, communication every time. 
You don't master that in relationships, in right. relationship, it, it, anything. It's communicate. If if you if you let communication slip, then stuff happens. People are un, unwilling to pick up the phone and talk to somebody. Right. Um, majority of the time, when we have a problem that comes up, you know, in underwriting or whatever it is, they call it, and I say, well, did you call the employer? Did you talk to the appraiser? Well, no, we sent them an email that they won't reply. Okay, well, watch this. Yeah. And I pick up the phone, and we're on a Zoom call or whatever, talking yeah. about this problem of this. And I'll pick up the phone, and I'll dial them, and I'll talk to the lady in HR that needs to fill out the written VOE. I said, that took 37 seconds. It shows on my phone that it took 37 seconds to call, and you guys have been waiting a week. A week. Can you not, you know, so, and reminding them constantly. Yeah. We are reminding, Aaron's <laughs> reminding his people. I'm reminding my people. You have to communicate. Yeah. We are not going to, and with the historic volume that we have right now, if you do not communicate, we will fail, period. I mean, it's not, um, it's not something that you can let slide, and we're constantly getting on there about communication. The uh, problem we so. have with the historic volume that I believe right now is if you do, you're, you either have the ability to grow exponentially and get better and better and better, or you get more people that know how much you suck. Yeah, right. So you get to get the whole world, because you because I'm, I'm in 26 states, so a lot yeah. of people get to find out my team sucks if they suck right and it's all they gotta do is open up the communication that's it that's the yeah. only thing if they just do that yeah that one thing i think it would yeah. change everything everything is solved well every problem is caused by people yeah. every problem could be solved by people right yeah. the, only thing, the, the people. only way to solve it yeah. pick up the effing phone yep that's it and we find too many times that people are it's not that they're unwilling to pick up the phone because most of the time they are but it's talking to them and saying Hey, did you pick up the phone? Right. Because they just get in their habit Encourage, of, you know what, email, email. Right. I can put 10 people on an email. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But when it gets down to a problem, mm -hmm. you have to have a one-on-one -on -one call or have a conference call. Have yeah. everybody on the phone. You know. So. The other problem with, the, with the emailing everybody is, like when I look at it, well, somebody's got it. Yeah. yeah. Everybody assuming, thinks somebody else has got because it. Because you're assuming that there's yeah, more than one right. person yeah. in charge. Well, they no were on the email. Yeah, right. exactly. The one thing we found in our organization, like time and time and time again, that if you if you don't communicate something in multiple channels and at least touch that person who you're trying to get the message across to mm -hmm. eight times, and this is more about change management from a communications perspective, but if, yeah. if you've got a big initiative you're trying to roll out, right. you got to hit them in eight different channels and at least eight different times to really have to start to see that snowball moving of change. You know, you can tell someone, you can put fancy logos on the wall and talk about them and shoot out an email, but really it's that consistent yeah. persistence, you know, that messaging over and over and over again. So um, I find it fascinating that people don't, you know, want to pick up the phone, but I think, I think there is a bit of a generational gap there. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, we have computers, we didn't grow up necessarily with yeah, them the way right. the next generation mm -hmm. has. And they're just, everything's instant, everything's immediate, and they expect it to be like that when they're a consumer, but that's not the way the world works. You know, sometimes you gotta pick up the phone and have a conversation mm -hmm. and solve it in 37 seconds, yeah. as opposed to waiting on a week for, yep. a, for a simple yeah, VOE or something to, like yeah. that. Right? For somebody to reply. Right. I've said a hundred times, I would love to go back to the rotary phone, but with Bluetooth. Because there's no other way to communicate but with that one thing that you had to pick up, that clunky thing, and you had to do the do the dial. And if they didn't answer, they didn't answer. You had to stay persistent in reaching out to them or go down to their office or whichever. Mm -hmm. And then the only thing I want the Bluetooth is because remember your, your mom had that 70-foot cord? She was walking around the house, and you'd stumble on it and get you get caught in stuff. Get your private conversation in the kitchen pantry. <laughs> somebody, else, somebody else pick up the line in the, the house and be able to listen in. <laughs> All that kind of crap. But get well, off the phone. It, you Mike. were forced to communicate. You were forced to talk. Yeah. You were forced to pick up mm -hmm. the phone back then. Yeah. They have too many too many outlets now. What would um, when you're thinking back on how when you got got going got into all this we know you and I started a very similar way with it, it was, I was you know it was 23 years ago and I started telemarketing I didn't have the phone book they sent me a list and started doing the telemarketing thing so it was the same thing um, but what would you say was there ever a point where like it I, I want out um, halfway through the the H's in, <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> The only time I, I got to the point where saying I, I might be done with this was two, after 2007, the 2008 crash. Um, that was one of the hardest times at Security National. I mean, we lived through it, mm -hmm. but it was one of the hardest times at Security National because it was no, 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 no. We have to fix it. We have to fix it. We have to fix it. 
and being in the industry, you you know we had to fix it. Yeah. You know, but our investors wanted us to fix it their way. And everybody, government wanted to fix it their way. Everybody wanted to fix it, but the people that were in it having the opportunity to be able to fix it. Well, the people that knew how to fix it were the ones right. that weren't able to fix it. Right. So to me, that was that was one of the times, that was the darkest days is what I call it at Supreme National because it was, it was rough, but... Um, but we were able to keep it going. Yeah, see, I don't. So, I, I didn't get to remember those days. I was on. I was on a morphine drip. It was. Yeah. I, I had good days. I was vacating right. elsewhere right. chemically. I, I felt like I was on some kind of drift because it was bad. So it was. It was not fun. So and for me, because that during that time we weren't growing, mm -hmm. we weren't progressing at all. It was almost like somebody hit the pause button, you know, and reran and then took that VHS and. You know, pulled all of it, pulled yeah. everything Get out. VHS, we're gonna yeah. have to define that. Yeah, VHS, totally. uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. what that looks like. How many like other pieces of it? technology yeah. can we? Uh -huh. yeah. 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 And else ruined it. Uh, yeah, and ruined it. And it was a couple of years of just stagnant. Yeah. And, and and me knowing what we had to do, mm -hmm. which was go from wholesale to retail, and all of our customers that were wholesale. So, brokers, so you're doing. You were involved in all wholesale at the time. Yeah. So okay. until 2010, we were all wholesale. Okay. And we kept saying, because all of our customers, all of our wholesale brokers were coming to us saying, hey, we love your system. We know how it works. We love your people. Can we just flip the name on our, you know, on the sign from, you know, XYZ Joel's, to... Joel's mortgage brokership to, you know, to Security National Mortgage. Can we do that? And Security National was fighting that. They were like, no, we're wholesale, we're wholesale, we're wholesale. They kept saying, no, we, let's do this. Let's bring them on. I mean, um, and if it was called so, Joel's Mortgage Fund, they would have made it through. Right, anyway. yes, like, yes. They, they would have flipped they, that they name. Yeah, right. <laughs> Might have changed it to JJ's. There you go, JJ's. <laughs> but, it eventually would have been one of those strip clubs. Along the 89A. Yeah. <laughs> so it was uh, not until 2010 when Paul said, Paul Christensen said, I got this. Joel's coming with me. We'll do it. We're going to retail. Joel, you're not reporting to them anymore. You're reporting to me, and we're going to do this. And that's when me and Paul switched, and Paul took over, kind of, and yeah. And that's that's what I know. When Paul says it, it's done. Yeah. yeah right. So having the two of you yep. in my corner has made a big, big, big difference. Yeah. So what? Um, how long do you think you got? Um, well, I keep I keep telling everybody I'm at 55. I'm done. So, but. You know, you, you never know. I, so I'm, you got another that, decade. That's my yeah. That's my goal. Yep, I'm 44, and if if I make it to 55, great. But I, for me, my commitment is to my people, to my region. So my role where I'm at, because of the, I guess you could say, the management power that I have, um, I feel like I can ensure their success mm -hmm. by being in the role that I'm in. Um, if I'm in a different role, I don't know if I can ensure the, the same level of uh, commitment that, you know, I just don't think I, I couldn't turn it over to somebody else and, in my opinion, expect my people to continue their success the way it is today. Yeah, you don't want to walk so, away. You, you don't know what it's going to be like when you walk away. I, that's my question. Yeah. It's like, what am I going to do if I ever did? Right. Things are growing out of hand. It's like, I probably could sell my cell phone number for it crap ton of money yeah because uh -huh. some bitch just rings all the time with money coming through it right so there's that and then or i could just put people in place and Except then just continue an android right. so you're not gonna get much oh, right. Right. <laughs> there's rebates that crazy on those. so then you get and they don't have to get a new one every 15 minutes so you've got then you know it's i can set people in place and then just be the face of it and yes. just collect right. a piece right. of it I don't know. You know. I just figure when I go to the grave, I'm coming in hot. I'm just going to keep keep at it, keep doing something, whether we're doing this, doing lending, yeah. doing something. I always just keep cranking. So to me, I mean, I I could work till I'm 75, if you know, if I've got the health and you know, and the interest, and, and the interest to, and the commitment to the people that I I feel like I my commitment wouldn't change whether I'm 95 or 55 or 45. My my commitment is to my people and their success and. That's what it will always mean to me in the position that I'm in. And so I can only in influence that, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis the way I do today. What do you think it would so, be like if you didn't 
if you weren't able to convey that to your people, if they could did not get that you were interested in their success, or you didn't even express interest in their success, what do you think the end result would be? Um, you'd have people. It'd be a revolving door. Yeah. Um, because if people don't know that you genuinely care about that, because people can pretend they care. You know, I can send flowers to anybody. You know, I can say, "Oh, you did great." You know, they do help. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. like flowers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like real flowers. Gates. Yeah, uh, Lapua always, you know, always tells people you care That's right. from the heart. That's right. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, to me, it's it's about them, and if you're genuine about it, they they know that you're genuine about it. Um, humans know when somebody's giving them crap at most, you know, mm -hmm. and there's only so long you can buy, you can shovel crap to them. At some point, they realize that hey, this this is not real, and they'll go look for some something somewhere else for them to fulfill. If they want to stay in the industry that they're in or stay at their job, they want to be appreciated. I mean, yeah. as sappy as that is, and but no, people fair. want to feel valued in life, and if they don't, they'll go somewhere else. Well, if you're going to be so, in the, on the on the short track to failure, it's why not do it by yourself instead of having to look at that idiot uh -huh. every right. day? Yeah. Right. So if I'm gonna, I'm gonna fail. I don't want to fail with that guy in my face. Yeah. So right. I can, yeah. For for me, it was just, I'd fight, 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 fight every single person I ever, ever, ever had in a leadership position. It seemed like for many years, and now, um, I, I mean, I'll, I'll be blunt. I just been times I wonder, okay, where's the, when's the shoe dropping? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I gotta keep looking over my shoulder. What kind of crap is gonna happen? And then just in the last year or so, I'm like, want well, something? I'm just gonna go. Right. I'm just going to trust that my back is taken care of, and I don't yeah. have to look. I don't have to wonder if there's a knife in it, yeah. and look where we're at. Yep. Um, so, what what would you say of all things that's ever happened to you in your life? You know, there's always that. There's there's that moment. There's always mm -hmm. something that people get to look to and say. There's something that was the absolute worst thing that's ever happened in your existence, but you can look back now after years have gone by and say that was the greatest thing that could have ever happened to me. Um, I think I mentioned it earlier. I got. Married at 19, divorced at 21. I heard, well, you're, at, I heard you divorced at 21, but so, you married at 19. Yeah, okay. yeah, married at 19, high school, um, out of high school, get married because you know, that's what you do. You know, where, where I grow up, the, the culture, that's what you do. Mm -hmm. And I, and after a couple years, I said, this is not what I want. This is, this is not me. I do, I do not want to do that. I want to be married to somebody that I actually care about, first of all. You know, surprise. You know, who wants yeah. to do that? Jeez, you're so yeah. selfish. I know, Joel. right? I know, right? <laughs> but for me, it was then finding someone that showed that I, va I was a value. And so at that point on, my life changed to um, if I have a good idea, if I have an idea in my, in my brain, the people that succeed in life try that idea people that don't are not willing to try right if if you're not willing to try um i, I didn't care if i failed because at that point in my life i thought my whole life up until 19 what you know not much of a lie but the decisions i had made in in my opinion i was failing so then finding someone that said hey you know i'll support you i have confidence in you um to me, that put me on a path of having confidence in myself and having knowing I I was of value to someone, mm -hmm. um, and that's where I changed. I right, it gets right back to everything you said. You were yeah. of value to someone, right? And because of that, you yeah. felt like you could accomplish more. Yes. Yep. And you and it got you up out of the bed every morning. Right. Being again, gets right, value. Somebody just yeah saying hi. Sometimes just saying hi to somebody yes. changes right. their life. Yes. Um, and so for me, that changed, but I remember how I felt personally. And from that point on, I said, if I have an influence in somebody else's life to make them feel even just a tiny bit yeah. of what I felt, I'm going to try to help them feel the same way. And to me, that's what, yeah, what started it for me. Well, and you took that and ran with it in a big way. Yeah. People, and I appreciate that. People will forget what you told them, they'll forget what you said, but they'll never forget how yeah. you make them feel. Right. You yeah. know, so relationships, business, everything else the same. So yeah. that's, yep. that's powerful. I like that.
Yeah. So I, if I can sum up this conversation for people who weren't paying enough attention to sum it up for themselves, it's, you know, one, pick up the damn phone, communicate, yes. talk to other yes. people, yeah. don't assume they know what you're thinking, mm -hmm. I'm bad at that crap, uh, and don't um, don't assume that the, the minute communication is getting to them. Have a very, very open conversation with people. Be, be, be direct. It's the greatest yeah. gift that we have as our species. Is yes. the ability to like verbally communicate, communicate. exactly yeah. what we want the other person to understand. And there's so and confirm they got it. And confirm they got it, mm -hmm. right? And you got two ears and one mouth. You should be doing a lot of the listening first in communication. But it's also that space between speaking and thinking. That little mm -hmm. clearing between. Yeah. Okay, let's give this some thought and then speak with intention and communicate with intention. So um, I couldn't agree more, man. That's, that's good. Yeah. yeah. So quit the jerking off, start freaking communicating. Yep. And also tell people in this part of communicating, tell them what you think, tell them how you feel. Yes. Communicate when they're, when they're doing something awesome. Also help them up when they're doing something wrong. Yeah. Don't just you know, let them fall on their face. So yeah. thanks for talking to us a little yeah, bit. Thanks for coming out and hanging with us. Yeah. Thanks for inviting the Jeeps and this stuff. awesome. Yeah, I'll have to do it again. Be the best Joel we've ever had on the yeah, show. Yeah, right? <laughs> and we've got this one. Well, the, well, now it's <laughs> we've got this other Joel that keeps yeah, showing up. Joel. We can't go to his ass. Right, yeah. yeah. Snowmobiling Small in tires. January, you know, in Utah. That's where we'll... All right. Yeah. Oh, we'll go do that. I'm yeah. in. Yep. Heck yeah. 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 We don't have do much travel snowballing. scheduled right now, so I'm in. Okay. That was a joke. We have yeah, a January. <laughs> I'm in. January. Awesome. Cool. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks, guys. This is awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Joel. Good hang with you. Yep. Thanks, bro. Way to... Yep.